This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Thursday, May the 30th, 2019. It's the feast of St. Isaac of Dalmatia, a.k.a. Isaac the Confessor. He set up the Dalmatian Monastery in Constantinople. Isaac started his religious life as a hermit, and when he heard that the Roman Emperor Valens had embraced the Arian heresy, He hopped off on a yam cart to the city to give him an earful, and somehow the hermit monk managed to get several very long audiences with the emperor. In the end, though, Valens was having none of it, and so Isaac prophesied that because of his unfaith, the emperor would, quote, die in flames, and soon. Valens had Isaac arrested for his words, but sure enough, Valens found himself at the battle in Adrianople just a few days later. The battle was not going his way, and so Valens went and hid in a barn, which promptly caught fire, and Valens died. The new emperor Theodosius quickly had Isaac released and outlawed Arianism in the entire Roman Empire. Isaac made a good faith effort to get back to his cave, but the word was out, and a rich man named Saturninus hastily had a monastery built, and everyone appointed Isaac to be the abbot. He died today in 383 A.D. A thousand years later, in 1381, the so-called Peasants' Revolt in England got started. As one could guess from the name, it was mostly just peasants, you know, revolting. They revolted mostly because of taxes, but it's hard to see how the rich could have done anything else. First, the plague came and killed off a lot of people, as many as a third of the population. That meant less mouths to feed and so less food to buy. Less stuff to buy means less incentive to produce and less wealth to be created. It also meant there were fewer taxpayers to pay the taxes. And so to that, you add that the Hundred Years' War was going on, which had sucked every gold and copper coin out of every pocket of every, quote, rich person in the country. And so everybody was broke. Everybody was sad about their losses and nervous about another plague. Lots of people without spouses, without parents. It's not a recipe for stability to begin with. Still, the revolt went on for about five months, and it ended in November 1381. One of the most important things that it did was to show that a peasant's revolt could work, that it could affect the change they wanted. And the result of the 1381 revolt was a change in tax policy. But a few hundred years later, the peasants would revolt again, and it would be called the Glorious Revolution. A hundred years after that, the Boston Tea Party would prove colonials could get in on the fun. A couple centuries later, and, well, Brexit would seem to prove that the Brits never lose their moxie. Finally today, it's the birthday of legendary voice actor Mel Blanc. Born in San Francisco in 1908, he moved to Portland, Oregon, and split his time between a vaudeville kind of shtick act and being the youngest professional conductor in the nation at the age of 19. Not long after, he got a job on the radio and made his acting debut on a program called The Hoot Owls, where he was a popular and money-saving actor who could voice several characters for the same program. He moved to L.A. when he was 27 and continued his voice work on the radio. He expanded to TV with the Jack Benny program, and in 1936 he got connected with Warner Brothers and became the go-to man for their animated cartoon projects. His heyday was the Looney Tunes series. He was Bugs Bunny, Porky Pig, Daffy Duck, Pepe Le Pew, Marvin the Martian, and Speedy Gonzalez, just to name a few. In 1960, he began to work for Hanna-Barbera. That's when he became Barney Rubble and Cosmo Spacely. In 1961, Blanc was in a near-fatal car accident, and when he woke up, the very first thing his doctor said to him was, How are you feeling today, Bugs Bunny? And Blanc answered in a weak voice, but in character. Eh, just fine, Doc. How are you? And then the doctor asked if Tweety Bird was okay as well, and Mel's reply was a little stronger. He said, I taught I taught putty tat. Blanc died in 1989, but he remains the most prolific voice actor in history. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.